Hey everyone, so in this episode, we're going to be looking at implementing functionality for our stock. So let's go ahead into our application layer and let's make a new folder. Let's call it stock admin slash. And let's start with create stock. Same as always, we want a constructor where we pass in our application. DB context. X. And where we just make this CTX global. So let's make a public task returns stock. And let's make it asynchronous because we're going to be creating a stock. And let's call it do. And uh, let's just return new stock for now. So when we create a stock, we want to know to which product the stock belongs and obviously the information for that stock. Let's quickly take a look uh, at our stock model. So we can see we don't really need the ID. We do need the description and the quantity. We don't want the product, but we do want the product ID. So we need these three properties. Let's copy them. Let's create a public request, make it a class. Let's pa paste these properties into here and let's move product ID to the top. This should accept this request. Request. Now what we want to do is we want to create our stock. And let's, and let's fill out the information. Let's uh, add the stock. And let's return stock. So here we're reassigned the ID. We, will, we tell Entity Framework which product this stock is going to relate to. So whenever we extract the product, we will, we will be able to relate it to the stock object. And I'll show you how to do that in the future. And let's not forget to call Here it is, save changes async. And await on that. And rather than returning the stock object, we want to create a new class, call it response, and provide the following parameters. So let's go again to our stock object. We don't really know, I mean, we don't really want to pass in these two because. When we're going to create the stock, we already know which product we're going to be creating on. So we just really want the bottom line information for the stock. So something like a copy of the stock object. Let's create new response. And set the type to this. Okay, nice. Looking good. And uh, let's implement the rest of the functionality. So let's do delete stock LCS. Since that's going to be an easy one, let's copy this constructor and the do method. Let's return a task of bull. Import application DB context. Rename this. We don't need a request. We only need an ID. Let's remove all of this. Return true. Uh, context, let's save changes async straight away. Oh, wait. Okay. So, same the thing we do with the product. Let's get the stock from our context. So, stock uh, dot first or default. Word equals ID. And then from our, we want to remove this stock. Uh, let's do update stock. And let's just, let's copy this actually, the whole thing here. 
again rename the constructor and import the stock okay so primary difference between updating the stock here and creating the stock is that by the time we want to update the stocks we are probably already going to have more than one so what we want to do is create another class stock view model and move these parameters up there okay and now we make a I enumerable of stock view model since we're not gonna we want to use I enumerable because again lists are for if you want to edit the list we don't really want to edit the list we just want to iterate through it I'll just say stock okay so when this request comes in with this object what we want to do is we want to create a list of stock and it's going to be based on this id All right so let's create a list of stocks and for each stock in our request what we want to do is to our little list of stocks we want to add a new stock right and this new stock we want it to be this information here all right and instead of the request it's going to come from our stock object and let's not forget about the ad Okay, let's remove the stock object. This should uh, remove the error here. And what we want to do is we want to update range and pass in our stocks. And in our response, what we want to do is do the same as the request, just return a list of stock models because that's really what we're passing in from the view, I mean, from the client. And since we're using that to update, we can just pass in the back, back the same data. It seems a little bit unnecessary, to be honest, having a two object with the same class, but for the sake of single responsibility, keeping the single responsibility principle, this is how we want to handle it. So I am aware that there's a bit of du code duplication going on here. Okay, so now that we have update, update stock, let's create get stocks. All right, let's copy the constructor. Let's put it in here. Update the constructor name. And let's do public list get stock. Actually, sorry, do and return. So let's go into our update stock. Let's copy the stock view model, put it in here. And instead of list, let's say I enumerable stock view model. What we're going to pass in is a product ID. Okay. So if it was just an ID that was relating to the stock, it would be fine to pass in ID. But just for clarity, because we're not passing a stock ID, we're going to be passing a product ID instead. You want to specify that it's a product ID. So then from our database, what we want to do is we want to go into our stock. And where product ID equals the product ID that we supply, get all of those, right? And now what we want to do, we cannot return this stock object here because it's a list of this stock model. What we want to do is we want to convert it into this view model. Now, the proper way to do it is to put the select 
before the to list. If you put it after, it's going to execute the query, so it's going to get the full stock object, and then it's going to do the conversion. But when you put the select before you call the to list, that's going to properly construct the query to get only the variables that we need. So let's select a new stock view model. And let's fill it up. And we don't actually need the product ID, so let's remove it from here. So at this point, we shouldn't really have a need to get a single stock at any point. So I'm going to leave it at this. This will be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Like, subscribe, help me get these series out to more people so more people can learn this amazing stack. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try to answer all your questions. And as always, see you in the next episode.